Hey everybody, this is Darren Van Dam, and you are watching Flick Connection, the show that helps you get more out of movies. Today, I want to tell you about some of the best Netflix original movies that you have probably missed. So you know those Netflix original thumbnails in Netflix that you just sort of keep passing by but you're curious and you've never watched them? Those are the movies we're going to talk about, plus a couple of recent additions that you probably have not seen yet, as well as a couple of honorable mentions. Again, all Netflix originals, and these are not the best Netflix original movies necessarily, even though some of them are very, very good. These are the ones that didn't get a lot of media attention, they didn't run commercials, there's not been a ton of buzz about them. So my number 10 pick is one called Beats that came out last year. I was surprised at how much I liked this movie. I actually did a full review on it. I liked it so much. This is about a poor black kid that is close to graduating high school and he's very good at making beats, at manufacturing beats. So good that the music industry is interested in him. Now this seemed far from something that I would easily identify with, but it was very, very universally relatable. Not necessarily for everybody, but anyone that's like gone through like creative endeavors or anything like that, I think can identify with this movie. I thought the performances were great. Friend of the show, Paul Walter Hauser, plays an antagonist in it and does a great job. And while the kid does do a very good job and the story is very much about him, you do spend a lot of time with Anthony Anderson as he's sort of trying to manage this kid and trying to wedge his way back into the music industry. And that element was interesting as well. So there was all these sort of side stories that, that I thought worked out really well. Ultimately, I felt like the movie did fall a little bit flat. Not necessarily in a way that ruins anything. I just felt like they could have made it even greater had it concluded maybe a little bit better, but I did enjoy the story and again was very surprised at how much I liked this one. Why don't we say it was a hunting accident? There's no way that's a hunting accident. We have to call the police. We were supposed to find a solution together. A solution to what? A solution that ruins everything? You never know how you will react. Get out of my way! Now, a recent release that just came out, but again, not a lot of buzz about it, so it's a great time to mention it, is The Decline. Now, this is about a group of preppers, and they're actually out in the woods, in the snow, doing like a kind of like a seminar, like a retreat where they're all learning from this one sort of master prepper guy that has this compound out in the middle of nowhere. So for starters, I think you have to be kind of interested in prepping. Not that you need to be interested in doing it yourself, but you have to at least find the concept and the practice of it interesting to watch because the first 30 minutes or so of the movie, that's basically all it is. Now, obviously they're setting up character relations and things for later as well and it is interesting and then all of a sudden something changes and this turns into a pretty graphic film and it it never really turns into like this gore fest that's over the top or crazy or unrealistic it gets very close to that in a sort of a good way like i liked that it pushed the limits but it never just turned into something kind of wild and crazy. Another way of saying that is it felt fairly grounded even though the rails totally come off. Now this is foreign language and a few of these on here will be, but I've noticed something recently with Netflix. They've started running their little previews in English here in America, and I think that's brilliant. Even though it's dubbed, it gets you more interested in watching the movie and it gets more people more interested in watching the movie. While I am an advocate for watching with subtitles because then you get the true performance from the actor, I would far prefer you watch it with the dubbing than to not watch it at all. And that goes for anything with subtitles on this list, of which there are a few. don't feel at home in this world anymore is a sentiment maybe a lot of us are feeling right now, but it's also the longest title of any of the movies on this list. This one I liked a lot. This is actually directed by Macon Blair, who you'll recognize from movies like Blue Ruin and Green Room, and he actually had a small appearance in The Hunt recently. But this centers around a socially awkward woman who just cannot catch a break. Things just don't go right for her. She feels like society and the people in it are just sort of railroading her all the time. It's a dark comedy. Elijah Wood has an amazing role in this as well. He plays a character that's almost like if Napoleon Dynamite grew up 
and lived alone, became a recluse. And he's great. Some of the supporting cast is really fantastic. And it's just sort of an interesting character piece where some kind of wild stuff happens and then it gets really sort of intense in sort of the, the climax of the movie. I was surprised at how far they went with it. I liked I liked the conclusion of this one a lot. I think it's the best part of the movie, which is a great, great thing to say about a movie, but this one, well, it's not for everybody. I think it is for a pretty broad audience. It is pretty interesting, especially if you like dark comedies, then this, this one's a safe bet. I hurt people. I can't do anything about before that's done. I can show people I've changed. Would you like to take communion before you go? Oh, no, I'm good. Small Crimes is a really interesting small crime thriller. This actually stars Jamie Lannister, and yes, I will continue to call him Jamie Lannister because his real name is very difficult to pronounce, and if I said it, no one would know who I was talking about. But he's a recently paroled convict. He's returning into society, yet he's got some loose ends to tie up. He's trying to tie up those loose ends before he gets out of town. So in that respect, it just sort of keeps moving. You never really know what he's up to or what the big picture is or where this one's headed, but I liked it. I thought that this one had some Fargo elements. Don't get me wrong, not nearly as good as a movie like Fargo, but it's in that genre. And it's another one just kind of like Beats. It's close to being really great. I think they fell a little bit short. It's not a negative thing to say. There's nothing really wrong with the movie, but I point that out because had they pushed it a little bit more, they could have had something really fantastic that was worth re-watching on their hands. This one, not so much worth the rewatch, but certainly worth the first watch. Some of my top picks on this list I think are absolutely worth re-watching. And then we round out my bottom five with another foreign language flick called The Crew. Now this one is absolutely inspired by Michael Mann's Heat, one of my favorite movies of all time. This one's not nearly as good, mainly because it is a much smaller movie, but you can see the respect and sort of the homage that they're paying to Heat, particularly in the opening heist in this movie. And there are several heists in this movie. Very good characters, this one's gritty. Some bad stuff happens to characters you're gonna like in this movie, but I thought it all worked together well. The relations between the characters and the tensions and all that stuff is very, very forward in this movie. It's a, it's a major part of this movie, more so than the heist, but the heists are great and the story ultimately unfolds pretty well. And it's not really a ripoff of Heat. It goes in a completely different direction, but you're dealing with sort of a similar band of criminals and that their opening heist is very, very reminiscent of the opening heist in Heat. Before we move on to my top five picks, which are all rewatchable in my opinion, if you're new to the channel, please go ahead and click the subscribe button and be sure to click that little bell icon so you get sent a notification, maybe, YouTube doesn't do it all the time, but so you get those notifications when new videos like this come up so you don't run out of things to watch. <laughs> the Occupant is another recent release. It is foreign language. I was totally surprised by this one. I had heard nothing of it. I heard no one talk about it. And man, this is this is a wild movie. Smaller movie, like most of these, lower budget. But this is about a guy who's basically lost everything. He was this big advertising agent and he's lost his job and loses his big fancy house. That's basically how the movie starts. And then he sort of like decides he wants to wedge his way into the family who bought his old house. It's got kind of a Hitchcock thing going on, and it's beautifully shot. Cinematography's great, performances are great, and it's just got this really sort of dark, twisted story that is slow. It's not slow in a boring way. It's slow in a, where is this going? What is this guy doing next? Why is he doing this? It sort of plots out like that. I found the whole thing to be very interesting. And again, it just sort of reminded me of like a Hitchcock thing. Like I loved that aspect of it. If you like movies like that, this is gonna be a must watch for you. You know who this is? I don't know you. You're driving for me. The other two, leave them behind. I'm not leaving them behind. 
They're gonna kill you. Wheel Man is one I have talked about before because they released it right before they started kind of making a big deal out of Netflix original movies. But this one's produced by Joe Carnahan, who's one of my favorite directors. It stars Frank Grillo, he's great in it. And if you saw the movie Lock with Tom Hardy, where he's in a car the entire time, this is that same concept with Frank Grillo, except he's driving away from a bank heist. So it's not as if you're just talking and it's just this sort of like, the story's unfolding through the dialogue, like Lock, which I like that movie. This is an action movie. There's car chases, there's shootouts, there's all sorts of stuff that mostly takes place from the driver's seat of this car. I think it's shot really well, Frank Grillo's great in it, and it's just, it's fun and interesting, and it's just one of those little hidden things that Netflix, just for whatever reason, never really bothered to promote. I shoot you in the face! Destroy it! Smash it! Smash it! Smash it! Shimmer Lake is another one that has a fairly stacked cast. It's got a lot of recognizable faces in it, including some comedy actors. This is another one that's got kind of a Fargo vibe. The interesting thing about this one is it takes place in reverse, kind of like Memento. You're starting several days after an incident, and you're kind of backtracking with multiple characters as to kind of what unfolded after that incident. And then the movie sort of climaxes with this I'm just gonna say incident again with a crime and I thought it was really great. It's the perfect way to tell that story. It's not a gimmick. I guess it is kind of a gimmick, but it's the perfect way to unfold and, and sort of backtrack what happened. And they've got little devices, little comedy devices that sort of help you tie together and keep track of what day you're on. I thought all that was great. It's got some funny sequences, some really dark sequences, and then it's ultimately just this really clever crime flick. I was totally surprised by this one when I saw it. Oh my god, a snake bit the dick? We have to get the venom out. How do we do that? Someone has to suck it out. I am not sucking my brother's dick. I End think it's story. pretty good that the women should be the ones to suck the dick. Whoa, that's not even the same kind of sucking yeah. I'll suck it. I will suck the dick. It's really cool of you. Now, I did say that one had comedic elements in it. It's by no means a comedy, but the only true blue comedy on this list is The Package. Now, this one they did promote a little bit, but it just never really took off from what I can tell. And this is one that had I seen it in the theater, I would have wanted to watch it as soon as it came out available to rent. Like I really was surprised at how funny this movie is. It's about a group of teenagers who go camping out in the woods, like way, they go on a long hike. And obviously they're drinking as teenagers do. And one of them accidentally cuts his dick off with a pocket knife. And then it becomes this race against time to get the package to the hospital so it can be reattached. Funny concept from the onset, and then just the trouble that they get into on the way. Like, I could not believe how much they stretched out this journey with this dick in a cooler. Like, it just, it, it never got old to me. It's just a ton of fun. It's really, really funny stuff, especially if you like crude humor. This one is absolutely for you. If the idea of watching a movie about someone who cut their dick off repulses you, just, you know, steer clear of this one. All right, before my number one pick, here's a couple of honorable mentions. Ark is an early, early Netflix original movie that's a sci-fi flick that deals with time travel, and it all sort of takes place in one location, budget restraints and whatnot, but it works. It works really well. This one kind of feels like a TV show, as do a couple of the other ones. They feel like early episodes in a TV show or something, but I thought they delivered the time travel thing really well. It's basically like a time loop, and things just kind of ramp up in a pretty pretty great way for a small movie. If you have not seen that sci-fi gem, definitely check that out. Another sci-fi gem is iBoy. This is actually based on a book, and it's about this kid who suffers a brain injury. He ends up with some shrapnel in his brain, and is able to receive like digital information and sort of like, basically like hack things with his mind. Silly concept, but it's actually delivered in a way that feels fairly grounded. It's got kind of a dark edge to it, just a little bit, kind of a black mirror type of a thing. And so it, you kind of buy into it. As long as you do buy into it early, this one is really kind of interesting and fun. And another one that was just a, a surprise. I didn't realize it was gonna be that good. 
And then Fractured. That came out fairly recently and it sort of came and went. I kind of could see what was coming in this one, but Sam Worthington's really good in it and it's got this dark brooding nature to it. It's got kind of a Twilight Zone type thing to it. So if you like the Twilight Zone, like I do, then this one I, I think you'll at least appreciate. But keep in mind, these didn't quite squeeze onto this top 10 list. And then my number one pick is a little bit of a cheat because it's a fairly recent release and I just need to tell people about this this movie. It's called The Platform. This is another one that is foreign language. Just trust me, if you if you want to watch it with the subtitles like I recommend, please do. But if you just cannot do that, watch this one with the dubbing. This is a wild, wild sci-fi movie. It's insanely metaphorical. While the metaphor doesn't 100% work, it does work within the walls of the movie. All I'm going to tell you about this is one, I highly recommend it, and two, it's about a guy who wakes up in a cell, he's got one cellmate, in the middle of the floor there's a hole, and every day a platform lowers from level to level and it's loaded with food, so the further down you are in the hierarchy, the less food there is. That's the setup, it happens in the first five minutes, and then this really wild story sort of develops beyond that. Fans of Snowpiercer would definitely like this. However, I hesitate to say that because even people who hated Snowpiercer, I think some of you are gonna like this as well because it sort of like doesn't have the problems with it that you may have had with Snowpiercer. I'm really dancing around it because I don't wanna give away any more than that, but I really enjoyed the platform. I have watched it twice and it just came out recently. It's not common for me to watch something more than once because I need to watch something else so I can make sure you never run out of good movies to watch. But that's the list. Let me know in the comments below what you plan on watching from this list or if you have any additional recommendations for me and the rest of the audience, you can let us know down there. Let's thank the Patreon supporters for supporting yet another episode. I've got a true crime series list coming up very soon, so stay tuned for that. But I will keep making videos like this as long as you keep watching them. Thanks for checking this one out, and you will see me on the next one.